the biggest revolutions in our urban environments over the last 200 years have all occurred at the intersection of technology and city life. For better or worse, the steam engine, the electric grid, and the automobile. Now I believe we are on the verge of what I like to call the fourth technological revolution in cities. So, what is our vision of what transportation could look like in the future? When you imagine a city from the internet up, you get a place that is personalized for our needs and desires. A place that is adaptable, constantly evolving with changing demands, technologies, and tastes. A place that is shareable in a million new ways. A place that feels like a city, but functions like a community. The first pillar is that transportation is becoming more personalized. Imagine if you could type a destination into a navigation app and find, reserve, and pay for a parking spot before you leave the house. It's true, some people would use that app type of app to drive right to the parking spot. At least that would mean no more circling for parking and less congestion and pollution. But others might conclude that ride hail or public transportation is the cheaper or faster option and end up not driving at all. That means cleaner, more equitable cities. The result is a much more personalized mobility experience. But at the same time, this type of tool has benefits for the city at large. We also believe the future of transportation is about adaptability. Right now, cities and transit agencies have to rely on transit demand models that we know are, aren't, that all, aren't at all that accurate and that can't take into account the daily and seasonal fluctuations that we know shape travel patterns. But if you could collect the precise real-time data about where people were going in the city, whether through smartphones or some other means, and of course we can do this now, you could reconfigure a transit system based on a clearer picture of fluctuating tra travel demand. That doesn't mean cities would magically have the money to run buses everywhere. But you would know with much more certainty whether or not you were meeting the challenge of transport equity and be able to deploy bus service as efficiently as possible to meet local goals. A third thing is better performance evaluation. Clear data about travel patterns could lead to enormous insights about how well cities are connecting residents to job opportunities and connecting businesses to the labor force and how well they're adapting to changing populations. The final pillar is that it improves transparency and accountability, making the system fairer for all. Imagine if we rebuilt our transportation system from the internet up with sensors and license plate readers embedded in the infrastructure, suddenly cities can actually enforce traffic rules with objectivity. Suddenly toll booths become entirely wireless and the people manning them could be transitioned to more critical jobs like security. And if the constituency does empower local leaders to adapt a system like congestion pricing and LPR at sensors, sensors and LPRs help ensure that those producing the bulk of the traffic pay their fair share for it with the money potentially being transferred to other modes like buses as they do in London. Imagination on its own doesn't change the world. It's the policymakers who can bring these ideas from the digital cloud to the actual curb that will determine what shape our future cities ultimately take.